Hello, this is Dr. Oz. Today I would like to talk about um, solving the PAR problem that we talked about in our previous video. So I would like to cover in this class how to solve this problem with the geometric uh, measures or tools. And then I will show you guys in the next video how to solve this problem with Excel Solver. Okay. So let's talk about this problem again and finding the best, best solution for this problem. So to find optimal solution, uh, we must have the highest objective function because it's a maximization problem. The optimal, must, uh, optimal solution must be a feasible solution. Feasible solution. When I say feasible, that means that there should be no violation of any constraints. In other words, all the constraints must be sat satisfied, okay? All the constraints must be satisfied. Satisfied. All the constraints. All right? Satisfy all the constraints. So let's, let me just show you graphically what I mean by that. All right, so this is our graph. Uh, for the PAR problem, okay? Uh, in, as you see here in X as axis, you see standard production amount, standard bag production amount. On the Y axis, you see deluxe number of bags produced. So here, this line right here, let me just draw it with red. This one right here um, refers to this red line finishing finishing department availability so which means that if i produce this many units let's say 700 ish uh i use all my finishing department hours or if i produce a little bit above thousand deluxe products i use all my finishing department hours uh so i have four other constraints similar to that for different departments doing so here uh here i have inspection and here I have um, cutting. Uh, so I have four departments and I have four different linear lines. As you see, these are linear lines, straight lines. They are not, they are not like this, right? Or they are not like that. Linear lines are straight, okay? So these lines are straight. These are linear, linear lines. And when I intersect these lines, and I know all these constraints are less than or equal to. That's why you see these arrows here referring to the feasible region for this problem should be under those, those lines. So this area right here, infeasible, infeasible region, because again, all my constraints are less than or equal to. So when I find the smallest, uh, the biggest space that I have, satisfying all the constraint the constraints i will come up with this feasible region feasible region so this area right here uh, this this area right here is your feasible region highlighted right so i need to find my best solution in solution in that highlighted region so that's the idea of uh, optimization models anything other than feasible region is infeasible so it's not a solution so i cannot just claim that's the best solution um, now i need to look at the contours which are my which is my objective function again if you remember my objective function was maximize 10s plus 9d so um so that's a linear line too right that's a that's a linear line as well so for example this is that objective function line 10s plus 9d so in this case uh, you see the y-intercept is 200. What does it tell you? That tells you that uh, d had the value of 2 over, um, d has a value of, if you give a d 200 over 9 times 9, plus if you give s a value of 0, basically you will get the value of 200 y-intercept. So that's that's number here. So it's an arbitrary number. Okay, I just cho chose a line that is in the feasible region and represent objective function. All right. So actually, you can see here. Um, so actually, I, I, I yeah. So I, I 
as I as I told you here, um, this this value gives eighteen hundred because if I give two hundred value here to D, two hundred times nine will give you eighteen hundred times zero times S, zero times ten will be zero. So I can move this line this way, right? And I will reach to this point. For example, this is another example um, line. Same same slope, uh, but the y and x uh, intercepts are different. Why? Because this line right here gives you objective function value of 3600 instead of 1800. So how do you get 3600? You can either produce 400D, the lux products, 400 times 9, 3600, and zero standard products, or you can produce 360 standard products and zero D, or any number in between actually will refer to points on this line. So I could get combination of the production of deluxe and standard product. So again, I could push this line over here and over here. But if I just keep pushing this line outward, then you will reach in the infeasible region. So this is not a solution, right? I don't have any dot on this line that's parallel to my original objective function line. But, so that's, that's infeasible. So um, we know that for linear functions, um, the best solution has to be uh, at the very edge of this feasible region. So if I move, keep moving this again line over here, you will reach to this beautiful line. So this line has again, same slope, but this has only one intersection point right here. And we call it optimal solution because if I move, just a tiny bit this way, I will get a infeasible solution. If I just don't move enough and stay a little bit on the left hand side, then I will find a solution, feasible solution, but not the best solution. So my goal is to find the best solution, all right? But in this case, the best solution is the intersection point between my objective function, which is 10s plus 90, and my this constraint, which is a line, and this constraint, which is another line, right? Constraint two and four. Uh, so we need to look at those actually in previous side, but uh, intersection of those two, all right? That will, that will give you your best, best uh, solution. All right, so let's go to uh, next slide. By the way, luckily, I will show you guys how to use Excel Solver. I really want you to understand here the intuition and how the Solver algorithm works uh, behind the scene. This is called simplex algorithm. Uh, you don't need to really, uh, you will never probably solve problems graphic anymore, but I really want you to be able to solve them by hand to understand the intuition behind it. Excel Solver will solve this problem in milliseconds since this is not a big problem. And you using this approach that I'm just covering. So, um, Again, solving the par problem, uh, we need to, we need to, all we need to do is check the extreme points. What does it mean? So if I go back to the previous example, I don't need to search all this highlighted area. There are like so many, so many um, dots. I don't want to do one by one. That would take so much time. To find the best solution, all I need to find, do is find extreme points like, Extreme point one, extreme point two, extreme point three, extreme point four, and extreme point five. These are the extreme points. If I compare and contrast those five points, I will find the best solution. So that's simple. That's what Excel does. So I don't need to go through the pain of checking all the possible combinations because it's a linear program and, and, and this is not integer values. Basically, what could happen is that I have infinite number infinite number of solutions here. I don't want to search infinite number. All I need to check those five extreme points, okay? All right, so let's continue on uh, the, uh, the uh, next slide. So uh, again, these extreme points are located at the constraint intersections. So if I find those intersection of the constraints, those are my extreme points. So let's solve this problem uh, based on those extreme points. So let me just write it down here. I have again, five 
uh, points, point number one, point number two, point number three, point number four, point number five. All right, so for each point, I have S and D, X and Y axis values, and then I will calculate the profit for each of these. And again, profit in our model is 10S plus 9D. So if I go to the point number one, which is right here, basically this is zero, zero point. So S has zero value and D has zero value. So if I put zero, zero here, basically my profit will be 10 times zero is gonna be zero plus nine times zero will be zero. So my profit will be zero. I mean, zero is better than losing money, right? But it's not an impressive solution, obviously. So if I go to point number two, which is right here, um, and I know that point is, uh, is 708S um, plus 0D, okay? So then if I do this, plug the number in, 10 times 708 plus zero, uh, 9 times 0, which will give you $7,080. This is obviously better than this, right? Well, let's go to uh, point three, which is right here, intersection of this constraint right here and this constraint right here. To find that point, you need to equalize those two inequalities. Uh, so then I will get the number of 540, and 252, so if I plug in 10 times 540 plus nine times 252, that will give you the profit of, oh, again, I'm getting the same solution. That's good, $7,080. So I have two solutions that are giving me exact same value. Good, so if I go to the um, fourth, fourth, point here which is right here again intersection of this constraint and this constraint right here so if I do the intersection of these two basically uh, the number is 300 and 420 if I plug it in 10 times 300 plus 9 times 420 will give me the profit of 6780 all right but we, this is less than obviously two or three. So, so far two and point two and point three are the winners. So finally, I have fifth extreme point here, which is zero and 540. No standard production, uh, 540 deluxe production. So that will give me objective function of 10 times zero plus nine times 540. The number here is 48. 60. So my best solutions, I don't have only one. In many cases, you do have only one best solution. But in this case, you have two best solutions. And you can either produce 708S and 0D, or you can do 540 st standard and 252 deluxe to make the profit of $7,080. That's the maximum profit that you can generate in this problem. All right, so let's go to the next next slide. Uh, again, this is some, this was a small example, but I could generalize this approach, and it's called simplex algorithm, developed by George Danzig. All right, and Excel Solver again is based on this. So next presentation, I would like to talk about how to solve this problem using Excel Solver, and you will see it's much more handy and useful. See you next time.